Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Usheng Bagush, Monster Killer. Alrighty, here we are in the fortress. We all know the routine at this point. Everyone's in here going about their business, but there are reports of a forgotten beast in the outlying caverns. And here it is, Rub sits the name, an enormous weevil with mandibles and deadly blood. A terrifying creature. To the uninitiated, we've fought many beasts like this one, and honestly, I'm not too worried about it. Rub sit here is on the third cavern level, just below where the new fortress is. And so let's see here, I'm going to assemble the sand blades and the griffins of steel just right over here in these forgotten beast pens which are still non-functioning. Hopefully that'll change at some point coming up, but I guess we'll see. I tend to procrastinate. I don't know if you've noticed that about me. It's much more important that we get all these boulders cleaned out first, right? Such an idiot. All right, now I don't have any burrows turned on right now, so the dwarves are just running around willy-nilly all over the fortress. A bit dangerous, but I'm not too concerned about it really. Now taking a look at Rubsit here in the cavern, it doesn't appear to be moving towards the fortress at all. Hmm, okay. Um, not too sure why that would be. The creature does appear to be surrounded by mushroom tree trunks at the moment, and if we look up this slope here, there's no way up, it's just kind of a dead end. Hmm, so maybe this creature is stuck here. That's an interesting thing. Hmm, well, maybe that'll give us some time to get one of these monster pens up and running. It would be pretty cool to get a forgotten beast trapped in one, huh? I'd say so. Alright, well I'll tell you what, um, if that's the case, well, you know, I was going to send the squads home, but I think I'll just keep them here, just in case it isn't actually trapped. Better safe than sorry, right? And I'm also going to start work on these monster pens. This is too good an opportunity to waste. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is make some, some bait for these pens. We'll need some statues. We'll make 30 out of diorite, nothing too fancy. And we'll make them statues of just plain old dwarf statues. That should do the trick. Hopefully that big bastard mistakes these for real dwarves, spends his time attacking them, and that'll give us enough time to pull levers, close it up in there. How does that sound? There we are. And we'll try to get that done as quickly as possible. Oh, and hey, before we do anything else with that, looks like we have a new artifact here. Dagel Nolfeb, the log tosser, has created Sathirlam, a fungi wood floodgate. He claims it as a family heirloom. Very cool. We didn't get any artifacts last episode, so I'm actually fairly excited, even though it is a wooden floodgate. The False Permanencies. This is a fungi wood floodgate. All craft ship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with octopus leather and encircled with bands of fungi wood and square cut red spinals. This object menaces with spikes of orthoclase. Yeah, wow, well, uh, well, that's uh, something. An artifact, I guess, technically. I mean, it's got octopus leather on it. That's, that's pretty cool, I think. We'll have to find something to do with it, I suppose. Anyways, all right, now back to that forgotten beast pen. Now, something important we'll have to do is make a new chamber in the new meeting hall here with a bunch of levers. Um, yeah, I think we'll put it right here, actually. A little downstair, and then below there we'll put an upstair. Yeah, we'll just make a little tunnel in a small chamber like this for the levers. That'll get the job done. And now we'll just give the dwarves some time to finish that up. And in the meantime, I'm going to keep a close eye on this giant weevil here. I certainly don't trust it fully. Wouldn't want it escaping now. Although I must say, it does look like it is fairly trapped here. But again, better safe than sorry, right? For the time being, the focus of this episode is to capture that forgotten beast in one of these pens. I'm putting all resources towards this task. I really want to catch this thing. And you know, I'm taking a second look at this weevil over here, and it really doesn't look like it can get out of here. I'm pretty sure it's completely enclosed. So I suppose we'll also have to find a way to get that creature out of there safely when the pen's all set up for it. Hmm. Alright, so I know there are other ways down to that level, but I think I'm going to carve out a more straightforward path just to make things a little bit easier. Yeah, I'm gonna come over here, right to this area, just to the southwest of the new fortress, and I'm gonna make a little tunnel. It'll make things easier just in case we ever wanna get back down to that level in the future as well. There we go, that'll make a fine tunnel, and at the end we'll make a stairway. That will lead down, right here to this level, where the beast is. There we go, that'll do the trick. By the Dwarven Gods, another forgotten beast. The forgotten beast Dorku has come. A great dimetrodon with external ribs. It has a pair of branching antennae and it appears to be emaciated. Its pink scales are small and overlapping. Beware its poisonous bite. Fantastic. Another creature with a poisonous bite. No worries there, I'm not thinking. Yeah, I'm not seeing too much here to be afraid of, really. Except for the whole enormous dimetrodon thing. I suppose that is a bit terrifying, really. Now then, let's see here. This big bastard is... It looks to be on the first cavern level, where the old fortress is. All right, we know the routine, dwarves. I'm gonna call it the Sand Blades and the Griffins of Steel for this one. First, I'll send them to the courtyard, as per usual. Come on, dwarves, we have a beast on the way. 
And I'm watching this one. He appears to be charging straight in. Quickly, too. Alright, I tell you what, I'm actually going to put the dwarves in the burrow. Mm hmm. You know, I'm feeling risky, actually. A little careless, perhaps. I'm actually not going to even bother turning the burrow on. I instead will call out the sand blades and the brass spikes. Um, I'll call them right here. And the griffins of steel, I'm going to put them back a ways, just so they can fire from a distance, hopefully. I believe this is where that creature is heading, over on the eastern side of the old fortress. You can see there are a great number of civilians out here working on our glass. I'd really hate to interrupt that whole process. So yeah, I think we'll just fight the creature out here. It should go fairly smoothly. And by the way, I am not allowing the Rough Lovers to partake in this battle. I don't think they're going to do very well. We still don't have iron armor for all of them. Oh, they are fighting the creature, and I've ordered them to move in and attack. We already have a couple of dwarves up here fighting the thing. Following the beast. Alright, it is fighting down on the ground, covered with dwarves. I see bolts flying. The creature's enraged, fighting, still fighting, seeing a lot of blood. And the creature has died. Good job, warriors. Not seeing any dead dwarves here. Oh yeah, pretty good battle here. And it doesn't look like that creature was able to get a single hit in on any of my dwarves once again. This isn't good. This isn't good that it keeps happening like this. Just building my confidence higher and higher. Because one of these times, I'm telling you, we're going to find a forgotten beast that's going to smash through my dwarves, no problem. It's just going to happen. I'm not going to be prepared for it, and our entire army is going to be decimated. I really don't want that to happen. I really, really don't. But... You know, I don't think we're going to have to worry about it, really. None of these creatures have been even the slightest challenge to this point. Yeah, no problem whatsoever, really. We'll get this guy butchered up. You've probably noticed I haven't been storing their corpses in the museum anymore. Mostly because A, we've run completely out of space. But B, I, don't, I mean, they're really not that memorable, are they? They're kind of cool. Maybe we'll hang on to their skulls and stuff. Yeah, I suppose that'd be cool. Certainly a lot less clunky than keeping that whole carcass in there. Less smelly, too. Always good. Plus, we can make some pretty cool stuff when we butcher them. And that's something I actually really like doing. So, that's what I'm doing, damn it. Alright, back in the new fortress, we're still working on carving up those bait statues. And our lever room's coming right along. Just getting it smoothed up now. Very important. Oh boy. Okay, it's gonna be one of those episodes, I guess, huh? A vile force of darkness has arrived. That is extremely bad news. We all know how that last siege went. Very ugly. Alright, let's have a look. Yep, bunch of goblins. All armed. Couple beak dogs in there. Oy. Okay. Turning on the burrows. And we'll stick with burrow 8, which is most of the old fortress level here. There are currently a bunch of dwarves up on the surface, but I think they're gonna be fine. I'm gonna unpause the game. Let's see what happens. Alright, the dwarves are running back to the fortress. Very good, very good. And the goblins are moving in. Yeah, whole bunch of goblins. Got some beak dogs mixed up in there. Looks to be a carbon copy of that last siege, pretty much. Oh, we just had some trolls pop up. Big bastards. Well, at least they're not leading the pack this time. There may be a good chance that these crushing log traps do a better job than they did last time. Looks like all the dwarves got in, so I'm going to lock up these front doors. You can see I was in the middle of trying to get three more of those crushing traps up and going. But they are not ready yet, unfortunately. Man, that would have really helped us out, I think. Oh well. Alright, they are still moving in. Gonna have to make sure to lock up those front doors before they get to them. If I lock them up now, then they'll immediately try to go around to the other ramp entrance. The one that the wagons usually use. And we don't want that. Alright, this one goblin is booking way the hell out in front of the others. Slow down, man. It's not a race. Alright, he's up at the door. I'm going to lock it up now. Locked. And unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to lock up this second door. Which does now have a wall above it, by the way. Just because there's a block sitting here wedging the door open. Oy, damn dwarves. Yeah, the goblins are still heading up. Come on, group up, you goblins. Get on up here. Oh, looks like somebody triggered that trap. Alright, looks like I killed one. Technically better than nothing. Ugh. Alright, looks like we have one, two, three, almost four pages of invaders. And it looks like that's it, too. There's no more coming onto the edge of the map. That's a little strange to me. I think we had way more last time. Alright, a bunch of these goblins here are bewildered, it would seem. And the rest are heading around towards the wagon entrance. Not great news. Now it looks like we have a troll over here trying to break down this door. Well, I'll tell you what, they're all trying to go through the wagon ramp tunnel right now. Let's see if we can build a quick wall right here. Slow them down a bit, you know? Just like that. I'm not sure if we'll get it done in time, but I guess we'll see soon enough. Come on, dwarves. Get that wall up. Working, working. I'm really hoping nobody gets locked out. That'd be very, very stupid. There we go. Get that last section up. Come on. Okay, there we go. And now the goblins can't get through this rampway. They have to go through this main entrance where these trolls are right now. 
I don't imagine it's going to take very long for this door to get smashed all the way down. And unfortunately, it looks like we do have some dwarves down in the new fortress carrying boulders. Drop them, dudes. Come on. Super foolish. They're going to be dead meat if the trolls get down into that stairwell. Hmm, you know, it looks like the trolls are still trying to take down these doors. But the rest of the goblin army is just kind of wandering around out in the desert now. I wonder if that'll work to our favor. Kind of spread them out a bit. All right, one of the doors is down. The goblins are probably going to be heading back for the fortress now. Just turned on the meeting hall burrow, so all the dwarves are going to be making their way there. And I guess we're just going to try to do what we did last time. Yikes. Come on, dwarves, let's go. The goblins are upon us. It looks like the goblin horde is gravitating towards the entrance now. Oh, boy. All right, squads, ready? Let's see here. Ugh, again, this is going to be so ugly. Well, I guess you got to do what you got to do, right? We don't really have a choice. All right, let's see here. Sand blades, brass spikes, rough lovers. I'm going to take you three squads and assemble you right here, right outside the entrance where everyone's going to start showing up. Griffins of steel, I'm going to put you back a ways. Uh, back towards the trade depot. How's that? Get to it, dwarves. It looks like some of the dwarves have reached the top of the stairwell and are moving towards the fortress now. The ones carrying the boulders, that is. Pretty good news. Our military is assembled. The hooting of the goblins can be heard echoing down the stairwell. Their war cries. The savage grunts of the trolls. The cackle of the beak dogs. The air is tense, filled with anticipation. And here they go. A volley of arrows is loosed. The dwarves have moved in. All right, everyone is gathering at the stairwell right now. I have to assume more goblins are on their way down. Oh, combat at the bottom of the stair. Dwarves are moving into the stairwell. This is going to be a weird battle here. We'll be following Dakost Arrowhead through this battle. Really hoping he does well. He's currently in a martial trance. Let's go, buddy. All right, moving up the stairs. Still in his martial trance. I see a bunch of other dwarves around him. The dwarves seem to be... Oh, man. Oh, boy, this is ugly. Okay, the dwarves are at the top now. At the entrance to the fortress. Arrows are flying through the air. The dwarves are moving out into the sunlight now. That's not great. The sun's going to get in their eyes. Really bother them, I think. Out of the fortress, they are fighting. They seem to be fighting rather well. I'm seeing a bunch of dead goblins, dead trolls. There we go. For Usheng Vagush. Push through, dwarves. And I'm really hoping to the dwarven gods that that other falling trap doesn't get triggered. All right, the dwarves are kind of wrapping around the northern edge of the army. And they're just mowing them down, seemingly. I don't really want to jinx it, but I don't see any dead dwarves yet. Seeing arrows and bolts flying off into the desert in all directions. Keep fighting, guys. I'm going to stop following Arrowhead for now. And we'll just focus on this area here. All of the dwarves are blinded by the sun right now. Not great. Keep fighting, you dwarves. There you go. Fantastic work. Following Dakost again. Looks like the siege just ended. Just a little bit of a cleanup here now. Good job, dwarves. Poor bastard, just puking all over the place. Covered in blood and troll slime. <laughs> Glorious. Only a couple beak dogs left. One of the griffins moved in. Clubbing it with his crossbow. <laughs> Beautiful. Fantastic siege, guys. Let's have a look. All right, well, what the hell? Are we that good? I think we might be that good, guys. Are we that good? We can't be that good. Did we actually lose nobody? I failed to believe that. Come on. All right, let's have a look over here. Uh, all right, I did a brief look around at the dwarves here. There are some pretty good wounds in there. And so I'm gonna turn off the burrow and hopefully get them to our rinky-dink hospital. In fact, I just took all the military dwarves off duty. Let's get this place cleaned up, huh? All things considered, I think we did rather well. Doesn't really make a lot of sense to me that no dwarves died just outright. I mean, the rough lovers didn't have any armor on, guys. Like, actually, no armor whatsoever. Only those forgotten beast shell gloves and cloaks and iron helmets. But that's it. Look at that turnaround, huh? We're already cleaning up after the siege. Just amazing, really. Oh, it looks like the elves have arrived. Great, great timing. I'm surprised to see them back after the travesty of trading them wood last time they were here. Pointy-eared pricks. I'm not even sure if I want to do business with them, honestly. Yeah, we have a bunch of wounded dwarves here in the hospital. Slash dormitory, slash just mess area. But my god, they should be proud of themselves. That was amazing, dwarves. Good job. From this day forward, that siege shall be referred to as the Day of the Bloody Stare. And we shall always remember this great victory over the Frosty Barbarity. Yeah, I'm pretty amped up about that. I can't believe it, really. Just an amazing job. We have these corpse piles filling up to the north of the old fortress. We'll get that all sorted out before long. And yeah, I guess we'll just get back to figuring out that forgotten beast pen, huh? Sounds good to me. All right, getting those statues in place. Should be done before long. 
And down here, it looks like our levers are in place as well. Just have to get them linked up now. But it'll get there. No worries. And in the meantime, it looks like we finally have the first level of our residential quarter all smoothed out now. So I'm getting some furniture in place. I'm also carving away some of these uh, irregular walls here. Getting replaced with nice stone, diorite probably. So that'll be nice. Our first round of bedrooms up for grabs. It's about damn time, huh? Episode 9. What the hell? And I'm also going to start working on these traps up top again. Next time those bastards show up, I'm going to make sure all these crushing traps are ready. That'll be a nice surprise for them. Alright, the elves. Well, I suppose we could do some trading with them. We do have a ton of crafts here, and I don't particularly want to fall out of favor with Ilialetha, the elven civilization. So I suppose it probably is for the best. Alright, let's see here. We'll take your animals, some barrels, sure, why not. Some clothing, sure. They have a bunch of fruits and nuts here. We'll take them. Some splints and crutches. That's a good idea, we'll pick some of those up. And, uh... uh what, what... What is this? Clear Zircon Pedestal? C clear Zircon? That's a gem. You... You would trade something that you dug out of the earth to us, the dwarves? You're monsters. This is a grievous insult. The audacity of the elves. Haughty, tree-dwelling scum. I'll tell you what, we're gonna seize all these items. Including this pedestal. A yoink? Now take your crap and get the hell out of Usheng Vagush. You knife-eared turds. Such disgusting behavior. Once a natural vein of gems, now a crude bauble. The uncouth nature of the elves rears its ugly head once more. Oh hey, we got some migrants here. Very good. Welcome to Monster Killer, make yourselves at home. And don't mind the elves, they were just on their way out. Rat bastards. Alright, now that we got that damn elf nonsense out of the way, we're back down here with the Forgotten Beast pens. Yes, all those bait statues are in place now. And I believe all these bridges are linked up as well. Now we're going to want to close up two of those pens, and just try to focus on getting that beast into one of them. And that's going to be a little tricky because we have dwarves running all over the place. I did designate some traffic areas, but it doesn't look like they're being followed very well. So this might get a little ugly. I'm really hoping it doesn't. Alright, first we'll try to close up that middle pen. There we are. Alright, one is closed. And the second as well. Very good. Oh, and hey, before we close up that second pen, we have another artifact. Udil Adim Bamrek, the rock biter, has created Usenaimush, a diorite floodgate, another floodgate. He claims it as a family heirloom. The helpful dyke. This is a diorite floodgate. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of oval diorite cabicons. This object menaces with spikes of diorite and copper. On the item is an image of Dead Duck Humor Bridge the Dwarf in diorite. Fairly straightforward. Not bad, I'd say it's a little bit better than that last one, the wooden floodgate. Even though this one lacks octopus leather. Oh well. Fantastic job, dwarf. Alright, now we gotta get this second pen closed up. I wish this child wasn't playing make-believe on this bridge. That's the one I was planning on closing up. Well, I suppose we can just try to close up this bottom one. Just gonna pull these levers right here. There we are. Oh, hey dwarf, careful, don't go through there. Come on, stupid. Oh my god, okay, so somebody was just locked in that room. What a stupid dwarf. No biggie, I'll just take down this wall here. Get him out real quick. Anywho, so we do now have a pen here, loaded up with bait statues, and ready to accept a forgotten beast. But how to do this? I think I'm gonna have to make some arrangements first, maybe set up a burrow. Just to make sure things don't go awry. You know. First, I think I'm actually going to designate the new meeting hall as our official meeting hall. Which will kinda suck because it's so far away from all of our fortress infrastructure. But if we have a bunch of dwarves down here, then they'll be able to pull those levers faster. Which is gonna be really important now. Yeah, so let's do that. And I'm also going to make sure to get some food down here, just because I plan to keep the dwarves down here so they can pull those levers, and I don't particularly want them to starve. Ugh, you know, every time you start making some progress, one of these bastards shows up. Well, let's see what we got. The Forgotten Beast Ugash has come. A huge marten with lidless eyes. It has two long spiral horns and it has a gaunt appearance. Its rose feathers are patchy. Beware its poisonous vapors. Poisonous vapors, huh? That used to be one of the ones I was afraid of. But I know Mup, that skinless badger forgotten beast that appeared a couple episodes ago, also had poisonous vapors, and it wasn't a problem in the least. So, psh, I'm not going to be too concerned about it, really. Now, let's have a look. I think this creature is on the third cavern level, or possibly the second. Yeah, second cavern level, with the new fortress. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know how this is going to work, but maybe we can get this one stuck in a pen. That'd be pretty cool. Alright, um, the new meeting hall is looking pretty good, if I say so myself. We have a bunch of drinks in there, not so much food, but, eh, it should be fine. Just set up a new burrow, so now everybody get to the new meeting hall, please. Thank you. 
and they should be on their way. I don't imagine it's going to take that forgotten beast very much time to get down here. Come on, guys. Hurry up. There's a beast on its way. All of the old fortress dwarves are dropping what they're doing, heading down to the new fortress now. Watching the forgotten beast here in the northwestern corner of the second cavern level. Did I say third before? This is the second cavern level. Heading towards the fortress. Yes, it looks to be heading to the area where that pen is. Come on, dwarves, let's go. Okay, here it comes, moving towards the fortress. Right for that forgotten beast pen. Oh, oh, it's kind of kind of going around. I'm not too sure what it's doing right here. Just sitting next to this constructed wall. Probably a good thing. Give my dwarves some time to move into the fortress. Oh, what are you doing, dwarves? Hold on a second. Oh, man, so stupid. All these civilians here are trying to go over the top of this entrance hall. All carrying boulders, pieces of food. Oh, that's not good. All right, I'm not sure if it's going to do anything, but I'm going to set this Forgotten Beast pen here to a restricted traffic setting. Ugh, I'm not sure if it's going to do any good, though. It's probably far too late. Following the beast once more. Yeah, it's moving in straight towards my civilians. Oh, man, there's a whole bunch of people here. Ooh, ooh, come on. Oh, what's going on? Okay, pause the game. Looks to be some poisonous vapor we're seeing there. Damn it. We do have a couple of sand blades up here, but I'm actually not going to send them in quite yet. There might still be a slight chance we can get that creature stuck in this pen. I don't know. I guess I'm going to have a stab at it. But I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to close one of those Forgotten Beast pen doors, just so no more dwarves can go through there. And let's hope for the best. Let's see what this bastard does. Unpausing. Yeah, okay, it's, it's moving, chasing a... Oh, I believe that's a piglet that just went flying. Wow. And now the creature's just spraying vapors all over the place. Oh, 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 it's going after a civilian. Okay, um... Oh, man, and down here in this hall, this is Venom Blood. And he's just about to pass over that bridge that I ordered to be closed. Damn it. All right, never mind. Don't pull that lever. Okay, we're totally out of options now. I want to call out the sand blades and the griffins of steel. Let's go, guys. Just to the top of this hall. Let's go. And it will once again follow the beast. Following the beast. Oh, it is fighting with uh, a dwarf. Oh, here comes Venom Blood. Venom Blood, back up, man. Stay out of this fight. We have a couple of dwarves fighting the beast. There is poison gas all over the place here. Whoever is fighting this beast right now is doing a fantastic job. And it looks like they're carrying a boulder as well. Damn it, they just died. Ooh, this creature's still going. He's going strong, too. Fighting with a dwarf. One of the sand blades, I believe. Oh, uh, we have at least one griffin over there shooting bolts at it. Another sand blade joining the fray. The creature's wounded now. On the ground. It's gotta be weak. Bolts are flying. Many bolts now. The creature has died. And it's over. Good. Man, that was a tough beast, huh? I was not expecting that much of a fight from it. Alright, just a quick rundown here. Looks like that Forgotten Beast threw this piglet, which then skidded across the ground and slammed into an obstacle. I think it's going to be fine. Then it also grabbed and threw this gut puller, but they seem fine as well. And it looks like one of the sand blades that were there was Mengbak Bonfaikad, the Siege Breaker. Hmm. Who fought wonderfully, but was also caught in a couple bursts of Ugash's Forgotten Beast extract. Not too sure what the hell that means. Oh, and in fact, it looks like the Siege Breaker is one to have felled the beast. Good job, Meng. What a dwarf, I'll tell you. It's just when I look at her up here, it looks like she's laying on the ground and she's also flashing with a white axe. Not too sure what that means. Alright, I'm turning the burrow off. And warriors, I'm sending you home. Good fighting today, guys. Oh, a dwarf just died. Who was that? Oh my god, it was a siege breaker. What happened? Damn it. She did not get injured in that fighting. I checked her over thoroughly, too. I didn't see a damn thing. Man, I'm not too sure what the hell happened. Damn, I guess we'll have to chalk it up to that forgotten beast extract, huh? I don't see what the hell else could have done it. Well, I'll tell you what, she fought like a devil. A real monster killer dwarf. And in fact, she was the one to kill the beast. I really have to start making a place for shrines for these dwarves. That really was an amazing forgotten beast fight right there. And so what the hell, I'm gonna put some more pedestals in our cramped, crappy museum here. And I'll throw the corpse up there. Because that really was a fight to remember. Alright, uh, anyways. Now we are reaching the end of this episode, and I still really want to catch that forgotten beast in this pen. I was hoping for two, but we could still make it one, right? If we're lucky, I suppose. Oh, hey, I'm not too sure what's going on right here. I just got a message that this job was canceled because one of the griffins is unconscious, laying here in this hallway. Yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on. This is kind of what happened to the siege breaker. Yeah, it says they're sleeping right now. And they were just found dead. That's not great. Yeah, I'm really hoping nobody else got that vapor on them. All right, now this giant weevil over here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to carve out a little path where he can escape from. Just right here. Just like that. And I'm not going to carve out that last bit just yet. Just so we can make this whole process a little bit more controllable. 
I don't particularly want to suffer any more deaths this episode. And just in case you were wondering, I do have my dwarves properly traversing this main entry hole now. I set up some nice traffic areas. They were heading through these forgotten beast pens because it was easier to go out here into the caverns, then up on top of this hall, then through this farm area up here, and then up these stairs to the meeting hall. But that shouldn't happen anymore. Not as much anyways. Here's something really interesting, guys. Dakost Arrowhead Dodoktalesh, the Sandblade, has bestowed the name Oltarudesh Zamnathasdam upon a Bismuth Bronze Battle Axe. Okay? Which translates to Gilt Skins, the Excavated Light, just in case you were wondering. But if we take a look at this axe, it has been used so far to kill 27 creatures. Mostly goblins, a couple beak dogs, some trolls, and one forgotten beast. But I thought it was interesting because this axe here used to be owned by Lycott, Venomblood's father who was a friend of Arrowhead here. Now, I'm not too sure what possessed Arrowhead to drop his old weapon and pick this one up after Lycod died, but that's pretty interesting to me. Almost like he's trying to carry on his legacy or something. And plus, I also find it interesting that he named the axe after he got 14 kills. One more than Lycod ever got with it. Perhaps to honor his deceased friend? I'll assume as much. One of those tiny tidbits that makes for a good story here in Dwarf Fortress. I love it. But anyways... Oh my god, it's constant, I tell you. The Minotaur Equi Amatiarazi Rari Tabami has come. A giant humanoid monster with the head of a bull. Alright, I tell you what, I am not in the mood for this garbage. All squads, get up there, kill the damn thing. Let's do this. Following the beast, and here it comes. Charging in at a, a, a giant grasshopper, I believe that is. Chasing it down. Looks to be goring the creature. Moving towards the fortress. Yeah, really working at the insect. And killed it. Just kind of wandering around now. And here comes a warrior. Fighting. Fighting. Ooh, not good. Here comes some other warriors. Oh, we have a dead dwarf. But they killed it. That's good. Yeah, that was one of the rough lovers who got it. Yeah, got him pretty good too. Yeah, pretty ugly. But I guess that's what happens, huh? This fortress, I'll tell you. It's just non-stop activity. Kind of crazy, really. This entire episode, we've been focusing on trying to get that forgotten beast into this pen up here. And we've made so little progress. I mean, the pen's all set now, I guess. But geez, we had two other forgotten beasts attack, as well as a siege and a minotaur. And I'll tell you what, it kind of stinks, but I'm not going to try to capture that forgotten beast this episode. I'll save it to next episode. Gives us something to look forward to. You know, you can see here all the dwarves moving to the new fortress, back to the old fortress, carrying around food, drinks, pieces of furniture. I'm really trying to get that place up in a working order. And my current goal is to have everything move down to the new fortress by the end of next episode. I think I can make that happen. I don't think we're going to have to worry about another goblin siege next episode. I don't think. I'll underline that. Just because they tend to wait a little bit in between sieges, you know. Oh, Usheng Bagush. You are quickly becoming one of my favorite fortresses. And I gotta say, I know originally I said this was going to be a short series, and I had originally planned on 10 episodes, which if you're keeping track, this is episode 9, so next episode will be the last one? <laughs> I don't think so. And so my current plan is, just letting you know before it happens, is to finish up chapter 1 of Usheng Vagush here next episode. Clean up this new fortress down here, get everyone situated down here, and then the following week I'm going to be taking a week off. I won't be doing a video. But then the week after that, I would like to start Chapter 2 of Usheng Vagush. I kind of want to try some new stuff here in the fortress. And I think it's time to change it up a little bit. Get to know the dwarves a little bit better. Like I said, I wanted to do a few episodes ago. I want to see the gods that they worship. I want to get a feel for these dwarves, the civilizations in this world. You know, flesh it out a bit. I think that'd be pretty cool. And so yeah, that's the current plan pretty much, and I'm super excited for it. But anyways, that's enough of my yammering. Well, you bearded bastards, I truly hope you enjoyed watching this episode, as always. And I certainly hope you'll join me next time here in Usheng Vagush. Monster Killer. And until then, you bearded bastards...